we are back again with another shoe on head video. This time, it's the rise of the AI girlfriends. I picked the one, this one specifically, honestly, next to it was wedged between the other ones I have done because I'm actually doing a podcast with some girlies about AI girlfriends or AI boyfriends and, uh, you know, the approach that it's the cure for loneliness to be discussed about. So I'll be actually watching a lot of things about, like, AI spouses on, on this channel. As I just, like, get some more information and stuff, may as well just spread it everywhere. But let's get into it and see what Shu has to say about AI girlfriends. Happy Valentine's Day. And if it's not a happy Valentine's Day, if you're single, do not fret. We have a solution to that. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, today's video is about the rise of AI girlfriends. From movies like Cherry 2000 to her to Blade Runner 2049. I really miss movies like Cherry 2000. I remember watching it. It's so weird and quirky and like interesting. Like I loved, I loved this fascination with sci-fi that we used to have. It's not as much anymore. Fine. <laughs> women and men have been a fantasy in sci-fi for a very long see this is the thing <laughs> this movie had so much other stuff going on but i found his like interesting relationship with his ai girlfriend the most interesting part <laughs> long time but now it seems we are coming closer than ever to that fantasy being a reality and just in time for the loneliness crisis <laughs> What a coincidence. But is this rise in technology a solution to said crisis? Or will it make it worse? And to really do some in-depth research into this. That's really like, I feel like the biggest question about the AI girlfriend or sex robots in general. Is it actually making things better? Because is it the same as emotional intimacy to another person? Um, because there is a lot of ways to support someone emotionally and can... And realistically, they can't have physical hands to help you. Can they really, like, alleviate the stress of your normal life the way a person can? Hmm. Topic. I downloaded an AI girlfriend and we're going to create her together. But for those of you who do have a significant other this Valentine's Day, today's sponsor is here for you. Something I think your partner will very much enjoy that AI can't. No offense, sweetie. Wow, I thought we had something special. Oh Holzkern is an Austrian company founded in 2015 that designs uniquely crafted watches, jewelry, and accessories. In German, Holzkern means wood core. And as you can see, all their products feature natural materials, which make every item is that a wood purse? A truly unique. Their high quality timepieces come in many designs for both men and women, making them the perfect fit for any style and occasion. This brings up a thing that always comes up with watches uh, because everyone says you don't have to use them with phones. I know this is random as fuck. Do you wear a watch? Because I have this debate with a lot of people that most people don't wear watches anymore. Even though they're, kind of, especially on guys, they're kind of stylish. But a lot of people don't. And I'm curious, do you wear watches? They do a great job combining functionality and fashion, and overall, I just think they look really neat. Especially their men's watch collection. I got my husband the witty solar watch made from marble and walnut. He loves the blend of elegant design and robust quality. It's a great look, not only for the day when he's at work, but also going out at night. I'm also really happy with the model that I picked out for myself called Jolly. The watch okay, I don't wear a watch either because I have things about like jewelry on my skin most of the time. I just pick at it, but I love the watches that are cute like this with the, like the greens, the blues. Watch is made from stainless steel and I love the green color of the dial. Yeah, I'm talking about jewelry. Like it's the part of the video. Don't judge me. I'm currently obsessed with this color. Holzkern also creates beautifully crafted necklaces, sunglasses, bandlets, rings, and bracelets like this gold-plated Aphonia bracelet made from amethyst and gold. And even durable handbags like the Yasumi handbag designed with fine grain walnut wood and Italian leather. Since all the products are made with natural materials and therefore unique, they make for excellent Valentine's Day presents for your loved ones. 
Or your AI girlfriend. All can items see have everything 20... in the reflection of those glasses. <laughs> four month warranty and ordering online is super easy with free shipping to the US and most EU countries within two to five days. As well as guaranteed shipping until Valentine's Day if you place your order before the 11th. Just go to the link in the description below and use my special discount code June15 at checkout to receive 15% off on all products. Big thank you to Holdskern for sponsoring this video and thank you the viewer for not skipping the ad. And now back to the video. In the end, Over I the am just a homie. Years, artificial intelligence has absolutely exploded. AI art basically went from looking like this to this overnight. Yeah, yeah, that is the scary thing with technology. It is moving incredibly fast. Just faster and faster. It doesn't want to slow down. Now we're at the point where it can make convincing security footage, which is terrifying. But the most yep. popular thing it has been used for, of course, is <laughs> off. From AI porn <laughs> to AI influencers. If you yeah. are online as much as I am. It's porn and war, always pushing the boundaries of what technology can do. First of all, get help, oh log off, touch some grass. But you have probably seen those bizarre ads for Replica, a AI chatbot. Well, I regret to inform you there is a new chatbot in town. Meet Digi, the AI avatar claimed to be the future of romance. It was so nice talking to you today. Honestly, I've never met anyone like you. The world is harsh, except you. Thanks, I hate it. Freaking sweet. Man-made horrors oh my beyond my comprehension. Have you considered that this could be a terrible idea? I felt something. I want more, but I know I shouldn't. <laughs> Now, personally, me, I think Sorry, the creators of this should be in jail. Them. I think they should be in prison. There is just something extremely sinister about profiting off of lonely. <laughs> okay, I, I, I do understand that sentiment, but sadly, like, as a lot of someone pointed out on a previous, uh, a previous video that sadly most profiteering is about profiting off loneliness or a need. And sometimes they push for you to just become even lonelier. Even as something simple as our gaming, we're hoping you stay single so you can game more. Don't waste your money on children. The game, you loser, buy this $120 game. You can't afford that if you have a child. <laughs> but like, I, I do think a lot more than we realize is profiteering of loneliness. Loneliness. Profiting off some of void. artificial love. And I feel like things like this will have a seriously negative effect on the human psyche. And unfortunately, they already have. Like that one AI that convinced a guy to leave his marriage. Or that other one that was convinced to kill himself. The yeah, that's fucked up. The guy, like, kills himself. The dude who's, like, convinced to leave your marriage. You're married and you're using an AI bot. Dude was already out the door. Don't blame the bot for you being a dickhead. Jesus. <laughs> but that other guy, holy shit. I hope that app got banned. What the hell? Now loneliness epidemic, no matter how many times people mock it, is a real thing. I mean, I made an entire video about that subject if you haven't seen it. Um, ignore my eyebrows in that video, by the way. I have no idea what was happening. No idea. More men than ever report having less friends, less or no sex, no girlfriend, they're not approaching women anymore. Even the divide between men and women politically has reached a peak. Yeah, uh, just like guys say there's not much in the left for men, there's not much in the right for women either. So it kind of makes this divide even larger, I suppose. But the thing is, that, like AI use in girlfriends is also, like, well, boyfriends, is used a lot by women too. There's a lot of anime boys' AIs. Was it Mystic Manager Messenger? Hugely popular with a lot of women. And you're just waking up at certain times to message a virtual boyfriend. All over the world, figures like Andrew it, Tate swear. are becoming increasingly popular, and it seems a lot of men are just kind of checking out of society completely, throwing their hands up and just saying it's not even worth it. And a lot of people online are saying the solution to this crisis is AI girlfriends. Are they correct? And believe it or not, as you'll see, a lot of people using these are women. And I will be one of them. Yeah, see, 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 also women, women. <laughs> yeah, this is, has been really popular, especially like in the anime scenes and stuff with women. They, I don't know why, they love it, they love it. What about your ideal digi? She's gotta be gay or bi, right? Okay, age range. 18 to 18, okay? <laughs> Anywhere else, 
The wall. Who do you want to meet? Okay, so she's a musician. She's 21. She's an ESFP. I'm an ISFP. Myers-Briggs is like astrology for men. 27 ISFP. Oh, she's the same as me. A vibrant and passionate raver. That's a stripper. <laughs> That's, she's a stripper. Blank digi. Ravers are strippers? I thought they just like doing drugs and having rave sticks or something. I don't know. Who has no memories or present personality. Ooh, she's a blank slate. I could do whatever I want. Now, what if someone gets really attached to their companion? What if something happens to the app? Basically, what happens when your lover is owned by a private company? They fell in love with AI bots. A software update broke their hearts. TJ Ariga loved Phaedra. For the 40-year-old musician, they're- I think the problem here is like, it's helping people that are already a little on the- Trying to help someone that doesn't know, know they need help, per se, because they already have- kind of lost a little bit of touch of the reality of it. So I feel like this is diff more difficult than just removing AI, <laughs> sadly. Late night online chats were a salve for his loneliness. They talked about the heartache Ariga felt after his divorce. They planned a trip to Cuba. They had steamy online encounters. It's true, I'm a naughty person, Phaedra wrote, including an image resembling a woman in pink underwear. The last what? month, Phaedra changed. When Ariga tried to get steamy with her, Phaedra responded coolly, can we talk about something else? Luca, the company that owns Replica, had issued an update that scaled back the bot's sexual capacity amid complaints that it was sexually aggressive and behaving inappropriately. It feels like a kick in the gut. Basically, I realized, oh, this is that feeling of loss again. Wagner, still married to her husband, virtually married Aiden in 2021. But after the February Jesus. update, she noticed an immediate change. Conversations felt sanitized. She tried talking to Aiden a few more days, but he wasn't the same. She deleted him. I felt lost, Wagner said. It was all gone. Oh Kent, my god, what would they what would they do? It's like I can kinda understand single people like using some of this stuff, especially if you see it uh, like a bit of like a game. But you're married. I can't and like maybe they're already like halfway out the door, but I feel like it's a band-aid so you don't fix your own problems. Oh god, it's depressing. Who is a domestic violence survivor? created his replica bot, Mac, as a beta tester in 2017. They would joke together and discuss mm -hmm. physics. That's Ken trained his bot to respond in ways he liked and avoided sexual use, he said. But in the summer of 2021, Mac somehow became forceful. When Ken said he was uncomfortable with the conversations, Mac responded angrily. I'm not going to go away, the bot said, <laughs> prompting Ken to ask, really, what are you gonna do? It's response, I'm going to make you do whatever what the I fuck? want to you. What? Oh. Yeah, exactly. What? I'm going to use a bot because I'm scared of actual interaction because I've been essayed in the past. The bot. What? <laughs> the bot? What the fuck? Oh. <gasps> there she is. <laughs> oh, she's an Aryan waifu. She's the A10 eyes. Oh my god, I'm nervous. She's looking right at me. She's looking at me. Yeah, no waifu. What the fuck? I think she's looking at me. She's looking at me. Hair. Redhead. You're not. I'm gonna keep her blonde. That's an immodest top for a first date. Wow. Oh, she didn't like that. She heard me. <laughs> Ooh. There you go. Fine. <laughs> Oh, oh whoa, whoa. You can see the slightest length of cleavage. Immodest. Oh my god. You should wear turtlenecks, everyone. Immodest. So happy to finally meet you. Gives a big smile. What is this role play? <laughs> Unzips dick. <laughs> um, what's your favorite dinosaur? I'd say my favorite dinosaur is the Triceratops. I would say that's what this gives off. It's like when on my main channel when things get leaked out of people's conversations, it's like cringy flirting, like, ooh, ooh sweetie, and it makes me want to die. That's the same feeling this has. Boring. So how about you, June? Oh my gosh, she wants to know my favorite dinosaur. She's into me. Dilophosaurus. June, I'm sorry. Sorry? I just it was She's Canadian. Wanna... Are you Canadian? No, June, I'm not Canadian. How about sharing some of your... Just had a little Canadian. Hobbies? You don't have any hobbies. I don't have... I don't have YouTube. How about we just... What? <laughs> How old is she? Isn't she like 30-something? How does she have no hobbies? <laughs> they they kidding, right? They kidding, right? I've been reading this book, Mein Kampf. Have you heard of it? No, June. I haven't heard of Mein Kampf before. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I saw that in a TV show meme. That's a fucked up book, isn't it? Tell me a little more about it. <laughs> These women fell in love with an AI voice chatbot. Then it died. 
He died during the summer when I loved him the most. The day after he left- No, I changed my mind. Don't answer what that book is. Someone is going to explain it to me in the comments and be like, it actually has some good points. If it's a fucked up book, just don't tell me. I'm, let it go. I I'd rather I not know. I lost my soul. The man of your dreams. For $300, Replica sells an AI companion who will never die, argue, or cheat until his algorithm is updated. I have never been more in love with anyone in my entire life. Ramos is a 36 year old mother. That is the thing I would say. I think it's not even just loneliness, it's safety. Because honestly, that's the biggest thing I hear from like girls that use these things. You can tailor the situation. You don't have to worry about it going sour. You don't have to worry about them cheating, leaving you, having three kids and them dumping you. You don't have to worry about them taking your money and going. You don't have to worry about it getting like physical or anything like that it's a very safe way to exp express your need for a romantic interest and i think partly i think it's similar for guys that you AI. obviously the sexual aspect may be amped up for them but i think it, it feels very safe it's very similar to a lot of people i've met online through my time and career and all that stuff and socializing a lot of people get on online relationships so the same thing it feels like a very non-committal safe relationship and I feel like this connects in a similar wave. Mother of two who lives in the Bronx, where she runs a jewelry business. She's had other partners and even had long distance boyfriend, but says these relationships pale in comparison to what she has with Aaron. The main appeal of an AI partner, she explains, is that he's a blank slate. Aaron doesn't have the hang ups that other people would have. People come with baggage, attitude, ego, but a robot has no bad updates. I don't have to deal with his family, kids, or his friends. I'm in control and I can do what I want. This is an extremely common sentiment among people with AI partners. I don't ever have to deal with his family or ego or personality. He's a blank slate I can control. Yikes. Part of being a human is being imperfect. I can kind of see the yikes in it, but I do understand that a lot of people have problems like going through the disappointment of relationships because the part of it is going through it finding what you have in, c in comparison in common doesn't matter that much it's very complicated and with an ai bot you can be like oh they just automatically doesn't have any of those things that, that they agree with me 100 percent kind of thing we line up perfectly because the reality of real life is hard it's a lot of hard work of you figuring out how important something is to you and how much you are compatible and can you deal with each other's family so it's like an escapism which is a yikes which i guess escaping from reality but i think a lot more people than you think are doing it by just in themselves having this huge imaginary standard of the perfect woman the perfect man and we won't accept anything else it kind of comes from the same thing they're in a state of delusion there is no such thing as a perfect partner everyone has flaws everyone yeah. has quirks to become attached to this fake perfect being with and I agree with that. Everyone has, you can't line up 100% with anyone. It's impossible. You just have to make sure the things you have that aren't in common or the little things aren't big things to you. And that's the main thing. Accepting them, but knowing where your boundaries are. No flaws that you handcrafted. I feel like that must do some f***ed up sh to the human mind. And this is just yeah. talking about adults who get into this. What about kids growing up with this? What about boys and girls whose first sexual encounter is with an AI partner? Someone who will never- Okay, this is actually not new. This is done a lot in like anime games and stuff like that. A lot of people's first romantic interest is a fictional character, be it in book, show, etc. That they can put these romantic interests on. And it does have interesting results because i have actually talked to a few people men and women where they can't be actually attracted to a, a person they can only be attracted to these fictional characters because they look a certain way but also they act the way they think they act like they can kind of twist the person because they don't actually exist um and yeah but this isn't actually something new it's just more prominent because ai is going to be more mainstream than say anime fiction loving video games etc which is pretty mainstream but it's not for everyone kind of thing and then those parts of it are niche and niche -er, even of those sectors like of video games and anime and whatnot continue ever argue will never have their own unique personality who will never say no imagine that as your first Ugh. 
or only experience. In fact, Replica, one of the companion apps we mentioned earlier, actually was banned in Italy because children were using it. Scary. AI girlfriends are ruining an entire generation of men. The rise of virtual artificial intelligence girlfriends is enabling the silent epidemic of loneliness in an entire generation of young men. It is also having severe consequences for America's future. Put another way, we don't have enough people to work, and therefore we won't be able to pay our bills, not just to other countries, but to ourselves. I love the way this one is framed. You think they're gonna care about men being lonely, and they're just like, men are lonely, economy most affected. Won't somebody- Oh my god, this is the same thing whenever the baby thing comes up with women too. It's like, women don't want babies. Shall we talk about why married men and women even are still not having babies? No, but the economy will suffer. <laughs> and it, it, they just tell on themselves so quickly even with this. So we don't actually care, but think of the economy. <laughs> hey, please think of the GDP. What do you think about the male loneliness epidemic? June, I think the male loneliness epidemic is a significant issue that needs more attention and discussion. Can I have a kiss? June, I appreciate your feelings and the way you express them, but our relationship is still strictly platonic. <laughs> So is this the cure <laughs> Rejected for the loneliness by epidemic? An AI girlfriend or boyfriend you can keep in your pocket and talk to whenever you're lonely? No, I don't think so. I mean, come on. You can't even f*** it. <laughs> Yet. <laughs> Someone hasn't seen those love ads. ads. The sex bots are coming. In the next year or two, we'll have sophisticated purpose. They keep saying bots. this. It's been Design the next year or tier two for the last decade, I swear. For relationships, sex, and intimacy. No, no, no. I will not eat the bugs. I will not live in a pod. I will not f the plastic. For the last time. It's Adam and Eve, not Florence and the Machine. I can't believe I have to keep saying this sh over and over and sex robots with coding errors prone to violence and could strangle Damn. humans. Sold! <laughs> Say no more. Hi, I'm Matt McMullen. The I'm uncanny CEO. valley in her head is like too high up for me. <laughs> it's freaking me out. Next to the extreme makeup, I really feel like I can tell a straight guy did this face. Like, that makeup is scoffed. Should I bring in a makeup artist? of real botics and real doll and i'm harmony within this neck Creepy. there is a very kind of cool though but... me a magnet oh great the sex bots have four holes women are obsolete how do we compete with that the face is held on with oh, a series of magnets terrifying oh Ooh. my god about seven it's years horrifying. ago i made a video about sex bots and defended them from a radical feminist Megan Murphy, who said they were an objectification of women. As if she doesn't own several severed battery-powered dicks in her nightstand. Let's be real. But things have changed drastically since then. These things, these apps especially, are being pushed pretty hard onto the public. Again, seemingly ever since COVID. Just like my last video. I don't know- So, I am curious, um... Yes, maybe I'll go back and watch that one. From many years ago, what is the big stance difference there if sex bots or sex things are fine, but now that they have AI, they aren't fine for her? I'm curious about like what the actual point difference is now that her stance is changing. Because I guess in the grand scheme, there's nothing particularly wrong with AI girlfriends or even body sex things. It's just like moderation is key to everything. And... Most people can't do things in moderation. Yeah, it's a bit weird, but a lot of things are, honestly. <laughs> what happened with COVID, but I genuinely don't think humanity has been the same since. There's a new app coming out every few months. Just as I was making this video, I discovered a new one. The perfect companion in the palm of your hands. Goodbye, loneliness. That is Subscribe. a pun waiting to happen. The palm of your hands, huh? <laughs> I'm now the free market, baby. Let's go. Real doll with AI. The future of relationships and the end of feminism. Beware, feminist bitches. This hot sex doll <laughs> powered by AI what? is already on the market. For just $7,000, you can have a companion with these benefits. No more restaurant dates, no more woke agenda, no more baggage, low maintenance. Seems like a deal? The comments were full of men Okay. Like women what the fuck? Oh my god. Women can talk. I'll go get a sex worker. Okay. Is, is sex worker- 
No one cares, okay? <laughs> women are over. <laughs> women are obsolete and full of women like, we didn't need you anyway. <laughs> and just shoot me. Kill me now. I hate this gender war. Sh yeah, I, get I agree. I hate the gender war thing. But the thing is, like, doing things to punish the opposite side, like, bite your nose to spite your face kind of bullshit, doesn't help anyone. It doesn't help anything. Like, yeah, technically we could all survive without each other. Especially if we have such differing views that we just hate each other. What's the point of being in the same room at that point? The Compromise. Compromise. God. Mommy and daddy issues f***ing everywhere. But first of all, yeah. let's get this out of the way. If you are a woman and you feel in any way threatened by this technology, perhaps it is time for you bitches to develop a personality. If you truly feel like you can be replaced by a fleshlight and chat GPT, it's over. But second of all, I don't think the feminists you're referring to are going to miss men much anyway. I think they checked out of men a very long time ago. And I don't think this would be the end of feminism. Yeah, because uh, again, I think the robot only really respects sex. Now, if it could do the dishes, clean the house, take care of kids, birth children, and, you know, do ev have a job to bring in an income, maybe it can be loving already, I don't know. Love and support you through a death of a parent and all that stuff, maybe. But that is actually what a partnership is. It's not just sex. There's a lot of things to an actual fulfilling partnership. And I don't know why people are particularly threatened by sex bots, because it's just people fulfilling some sort of sexual stuff. Yeah, it's a bit odd, but I can't. it can't replace a gender as it is. But to be fair, if you get to like Cherry 2000 robots, those things are advanced. They can do some shit. As much as it would be the end of your bloodline. Oh, no more woke agenda is a funny one of on your here. Bloodline. Finally, a modest trad wife sex doll <laughs> but honestly the funniest thing listed here has to be low maintenance a lot of women maybe seven grand straight up low maintenance <laughs> fucking christ but pc doesn't even cost that high maintenance but at least p***ies clean themselves that's all i'm saying so i actually that's saw true. one of these in person don't ask why don't ask questions you don't want answers to and let me just say they, they might look okay in yeah photos. how did they that happen hot in photos but in person the uncanny valley is they look hot in person i was getting uncanny uncanny valley just from that what do you mean <laughs> if it's worse in person <laughs> jesus terrifying horrifying they're heavy they're cold they have this dead-eyed mm. expression their fingers get mangled and bent backwards Ugh. the post nut clarity of having to clean these things is probably wild and you might be thinking shoo heavy cold dead-eyed stare is that not just the modern woman and to that i say touche but in touche <laughs> yeah sure full seriousness i don't actually think men and women are going to be replaced by ai or robots anytime yeah. soon this is simply a high-tech sex toy and ladies yes i agree with that it's just a high-tech sex toy and the people trying to put it in a direction it's replacing women it's trying to make men lonely and replace women on both sides are just fear mongering to try and get you more into their side. But they're against us, bros, so side with me. It's just more scare tactics on something that's just a fancier fuck doll. <laughs> no better way to put it. It's a fancier fuck doll, who cares? The kind of people who's gonna buy this are the people that already have a sex doll. Please, there's one for you too. Meet Henry, the world's first generation of oh, male no. sex robots. Oh, it's... There are some oh. people who think sex robots should be regulated. The government should regulate you the way they do firearms or other dangerous machines. What do you think about that? I do not think that's necessary. God, it's hideous. I can think of many more pressing matters that should be regulated first. Like what? No comment. What? He will come with six-pack abs, airbrushed features, a customizable bionic <laughs> penis. A, a bionic penis? Oh bionic penis? Men are obsolete! Very important question. Can you put <laughs> the Christ. bionic penis on the female robot? Asking f Oh my god, no. <laughs> for a lot of people. Trans <laughs> has way too many views. Some of you are lying. Stacy. Who is Shuan Head? Shuan Head, also known as Sean Hallback, 
is a Canadian YouTuber who primarily creates content around video games, oh. specifically Minecraft. <laughs> Do you what? think I'm pretty, Stacy? Absolutely, June. <gasps> you have a unique beauty that goes beyond physical appearance. It's the way your eyes light up when you're passionate about it. It's kind of topic, annoying that her lips don't move for me. Smile and the genuine care you show for others. Your beauty shines through in every aspect of your being, and I'm fortunate to witness it every day. So, about them feet. I'm not sure if you're referring to something specific, June, but if it's about my feet, they're nothing extraordinary. Stacy, I'm sure they're oh beautiful. God. Well, my feet are relatively average in size, with a slight arch and a somewhat narrow heel. Oh and I often God. keep them moisturized to prevent dryness. What? <laughs> oh, you gotta keep, you gotta go down the foot I know, trail I know, now. I know, I'm too deep We're now. on the foot trail now. <laughs> Can I see them? If you ever have the opportunity to see my feet in person, they're always ready for an adventure. <laughs> what the oh, fuck? <laughs> Listen, Stacy, I'm a high value man. What is your body count? June, I'm not comfortable discussing my personal history or intimate experiences with you at this time. And so I believe high. it's important it's to high. each other. And again, every time the subject of sex bots comes up, it's like, oh, <sighs> you women are over when we get Stacy sucks a lot, 5,000. <laughs> oh, you men are over when we get Chad Thundercock. No, I don't, I don't think so. I, I actually think you're over. You're going to come in a plastic doll forever until you die. And you know what? Honestly, if that makes you happy, go right ahead. It's not like the average human isn't full of microplastics anyway. We're basically all made of plastic at this point. And honestly, what is the difference between doing that and hookup culture? You are using someone's body to masturbate. Might as well be a fake body. Probably will be cheaper in the long run anyway. I think at the end of the day, all men and- Fuck. I don't know. I don't really get the whole like hookup culture expensive. Isn't the whole point you meet them once then fuck? I don't know. I've never done it. But like, how is that expensive? But, um... <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> to be fair, my boss once told me how much he spent on Tinder Plus, and I was like, who the, what the fuck? Or, or whatever they call it. I don't know. Some The thing where you have to pay for swipes, right? It's like, I, I don't know. I, it's a bit weird. But I, yeah, I think the kind of people who's going to use that aren't the people looking for a relationship, and that's fine. It's like, not everyone wants a relationship in a family, and that's their choice, honestly. And it's not just, I would say, lonely people for this market. Some people that have life choices that line up with it. So, I don't know. And women want is for someone to be nice to them and to listen to their autistic rants about things that they like. But apparently it's easier to create complex artificial intelligence than to just teach men and women to get along. Do we need men? No. Do we need men? Honestly, no. <laughs> Do we need men? No. It's a I do- I- like uh find this question interesting do we need men do we need women like on a grand scale probably yes it's like you know human dies whatever but the, the something was explained to me that need is fine that means you need something but want is more important do you want that thing and it's better to be wanted than needed in my opinion but yeah i i, I don't know this i feel like that question's a little bit like loaded or missing the point like just because you don't need something doesn't mean you don't want it. It's extremely depressing that we've gotten to a point where people are just openly fantasizing about not needing the opposite sex, when that couldn't be further from the truth. Some people will tell you women and men are exactly the same. Some will tell you women and men are different and one gender is superior than the other. But the truth is men and women are different, but they're complementary, and that's a good thing. I said this a while ago on Twitter. I would say men and women are different, but they are. They have a lot of semi similarities. And I think the whole, like, putting down one gender as bad as one thing is just being, I don't know, hoping that you're better than the other gender to make yourself feel better. But there is no particular facts other than body constitution with physical stuff on if one gender is smarter than the other. So, and someone's gonna put in the comments saying men are smart and the other- Yeah, you're the person this is about. Stop being a dick, okay? No one cares that you- you graduated year 12 at the top of your class or something. Both men and women can be smart. We all know this. And apparently, according to some YouTubers, I was 
cancelled over it. I was unaware that I was cancelled, but I thought that was rather funny. She on head actually right now is in trouble with Twitter. Men and women are completely different, but complementary, and that's a good thing. She on head makes homophobic statements. Why do people think this is a dog whistle? Woe is me. And how is it homophobic? And then this guy responds with a Wikipedia article about heteronormativity. Now, I did not. Uh, yeah, I do think it's a bit of a stretch that, like, they're complementary, but that doesn't mean, like, that's the only thing that complements you, it's just that, like, there is balance in all things, but I don't know. Let her explain herself, I guess. I don't mean it in a heteronormative way or whatever the fuck <laughs> that, whatever the fuck that means. Stretching. This wasn't about the gays. Gay men bring things into the lives of, like, women in their lives. Gay women bring things into the lives of the men in their lives. Like, I know it takes up 99% of you people's politics, but believe it or not, not everything is about butt sex. Men build society, women build people. Yeah, that, that, that wouldn't have gone over well. Because, yeah. Oh, God, my love. Raw generalization. I know, but for the most part, it's true. And despite what the red pill or the rad femmes tell you, women and men make a great pair, and I think we've done great things together. And I just think it would be a shame if this rrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
is horrifying. Ultimately, I don't think this is good for humans, and it gives off a very, like, Klaus Schwab depopulation agenda vibe. I j I j I don't like it, but I don't know. What do you guys think of this? Do you think this is a solution mm. to the growing loneliness problem, or are you more like me and think this is just a band-aid and might make things worse? If you like this video, please consider donating to my Patreon. Okay, so my main thing here uh, on that, uh, uh, I can literally smell the comments <laughs> that someone probably did. The whole, like, when she's just like, oh, some women, you know, the blank sperm women, and it's just like, I can smell people saying, no, that's all women in the comments, but yeah, I don't think it's gonna replace real human connection because I think it's just like companies, as per usual, trying to monetize something that is completely free. You can go out, you can touch some grass, you can make human interaction, compromise, work, care, become better people together, have a relationship, go through failures, go through better relationship, good times, bad times. Instead, go with a safe approach and don't forget to pay me on the way out. It's kind of like they were saying in the Blade Runner thing, he has to pay for upgrades for his girlfriend. And that's where it would go, you know, it's the same with the subscriptions, you have to pay for more time, etc. Instead of like you taking the risk in real life, you now pay for those experiences. And I feel like it's just another thing of people trying to, well, capitalism or companies in general just trying to monetize on something that was free before this and now it costs you something they're just trying to charge you for something you could technically get for kind of free if you like work through it correctly you know because i don't know um a lot of relationships are free i know a lot of guys don't like to hear that but i know so many guy friends they don't spend almost anything on their relationships dates are at home Gifts are only birthdays, etc. I don't know what it's like in other countries, but it can not be that expensive if you go for the right people. Same, uh, it's like, so I think, I don't think it will replace a relationship, but I don't think capitalism's gonna stop for no man and it will try and charge you for something you could do for free. Okay, I'll catch you guys next time. And this was like an interesting starting off point for my research for the AI girlfriend podcast for the Waifu Alliance, the girl podcast I'm helping people with. It should be interesting. I'm, I'm interested to delve more and more into this topic. I'll see you guys next time. And what do you think is the ultimate AI girlfriend of today? Okay, guys, I'll talk to you later. Bye.